You know, there's, there's three giants that stop us living out our workplace, uh, in the workplace. And the big one in the, the US, and particularly in the West now, is, is it legal? Is it legal to live out my faith in the workplace? And that giant has got to be destroyed today. And that giant is destroyed by me saying absolutely, categorically, unequivocally, yes, it is legal. You can live out your faith in the workplace. If you go onto our website, you can find a policy that Clinton actually wrote in 1996, make, make, uh, saying a absolutely that we can live out our faith in the workplace. So that giant is gone. Amen? Don't ever use that excuse again. Oh, I can't do this because it's not. Yes, it is. We can do this. Now, the second giant, which is huge, and we heard it from a question earlier on, is fear. Fear. What will happen if I really go for Jesus where I work? What will happen if I start living out my faith in the workplace? Will, I, will my career go to pot? Uh, will I be hated by all my work colleagues? What will my bosses think? Will I be ostracized? Genuine fear. I felt it in HSBC when I was working there. I was, I was working um, at the, in the corporate uh, office just below the executive tier. And God said to me, I want you to put a fish on your lapel. And I struggled. I really found it hard. Because I, I was fearful. How are people going to view me? What's going to happen if I do this? And I was convinced as I was walking through, through the building, everyone was looking at this fish. And, and of course they weren't, it's just my, my insecurities, you know. We have to work through this giant. And certainly in my experience, it didn't come overnight. It takes time to, to conquer this giant of fear. But by God's help, help and by his grace, we can do it. Matthew 6.33 was the thing I held on to all the time. And it was, it was uh, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and everything else will follow. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, not career, not my comfort, not money, not titles after my name. I'm here in this short span of life on this earth for God's will and his will only. Jesus modeled it. He said, I only do what I see my father doing. My food is to do his will. We're here for God's will. And only you and I know what God's will, what God's will is for you. And so our desperate cry is, Lord, what do you want me to do? Here I am in this place. What do you want me to do? So what he started to speak to me about and this was right in the center of the financial district, the, the biggest financial center in the world, although New York would argue with that. <laughs> uh, certainly in Europe, uh, the city of London, right in Mammon, where money is all about money. And God said, I want you to start praying that my kingdom comes and my will will be done. And so what we started to do, we, I, I got hold of a, a, another friend of mine, and I felt really nervous, and I felt really uh, uh, no, afraid, but I was willing to do it. And what does it say just after Jesus said that? It says an angel came and strengthened him. Isn't that great? You see, if we're just willing, if we just say, yes, I'll do it. I'll have a paradigm change in how I live my life now in the workplace. I'm going to live for Jesus and for his kingdom. His Holy Spirit will come and empower us to do it. So I said, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm going your way. Whatever they try and make me do, I'm, I'm going to just live for you and your will. Do you know what happened? The more I did that, and we started praying in the workplace, prayed in the morning, we started gathering other people, they started to pray, and we just prayed the, the, the Lord's Prayer. Your, will, your kingdom come, your will be done in this place. Lord, open doors, draw more people in. Within a very short space of time, we had over 100 people in that organisation, in that bank, in the city of London, saying, hey, we want to join in as well. And with all these contacts started to come out of the woodwork. How many people know there's lots of Christians in the, work, in the workplace? Where you work, there's loads of Christians. Isn't that exciting? And as the, as, the, as the body of Christ comes together and starts to pray in God's kingdom and starts to live it out, we used to meet at lunchtime and we used to, to just encourage each other and, and build each other up and reach out to be, to be kind to people around us. We weren't preaching at people, we were just blessing them. Because that's what we're called to do, is to bless people. Abraham said, oh, God said to Abraham, I'll bless you, you will be a blessing. So we were just being the church in the workplace. And more and more people started to get involved. We had six prayer meetings around the city of London in, in this bank, uh, where Christians were gathering together uh, and they were praying and praying in God's kingdom. This was right, this was in the early 90s, right in the center in the, in the city of London. And if it can happen there, 
It can happen anywhere. It can happen here in Cincinnati. You can see a great uh, breakout of God's kingdom as his people start living this out in the workplace. And the third giant was, how do I do it? I can't do it. And what I can say about Alpha is, yes, you can. You can do it. Anybody can do it. It's so easy. It's a, it's a plug and play. You can do it in any environment. Um, I've done it in, the, in conference rooms in, in the office. Best not to have a glass one because people can feel a little bit awkward if everyone's w- watching in and what you're doing. Uh, you can do it, I say, do it in the boardroom. Get in early. You can do it early. Typically, we do it at lunch, at lunchtime. Um, select a comfortable place where people can relax. Um, and the timing, you can do it through a lunchtime. So people bring their, their food. One of the things we do on Alpha is a key part of the Alpha recipe is that we have food. We break bread together because that's how Jesus did it. And when you, when you eat together, people relax. And when they relax, they hear. So we have food together, have our sandwiches, and then there's a, a talk, a short talk. And after that, one of the highlights of Alpha is discussion time. Opportunity to ask the hard questions and not have someone come back to you with a verse. There's uh, six simple reasons for doing uh, Alpha in the workplace. First of all, it's just being faithful to the calling. Secondly, I mentioned about it makes sense. There are eternal rewards for living this out. It makes sense to give everything to God while we're here on earth. It really does make sense. God will not let us down here, and we've got a great thing ahead. Blossom where we're planted. I'm a great believer that we're not where we are by coincidence. It says in, in, in um, Acts 17, 26, that God determined the exact places where we should live and the times that we should live in. Can we say that about one, our, ourselves? I know that I'm here exactly at the right time and in the right place through, through eternity. Isn't that amazing? So God's put you where you are in the workplace. He's put you there. Isn't that exciting? And he's got a great work for each one of us to do. So blossom where you're planted. Uh, Grow in our relationship with Christ. Follow Jesus. He said, I'll make you fishers of men. So we keep close to Jesus Christ. Love and concern for, for uh, where our colleagues are heading. Get, please, let's get this eternal perspective right. Remember the words of C.S. Lewis. Uh, and then the last thing is, God is with us. <laughs> Isn't that great? Can we say that? God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. And when we really understand and, and get hold of that, nothing is impossible for him. 